Well, it has been a wild few weeks of weather, right? Severe storms bring heaps of hail and heavy rain and the winter storms dumping feet of snow. Yeah, uh, it is amazing that meteorologists can collect and keep track of all of that data. Well, it turns out they have some help. The Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. It is a nonprofit community based, uh, it's a, uh, consists of a group of volunteers who work across the country measuring and mapping different types of precipitation. And the data collected is used by the National Weather Service, emergency officials, farmers, and a whole host of other organizations. So we're very thankful for their work. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this past month, the network hosted a March Madness competition to, to see which state could actually recruit the most volunteers and the results are in. Coco Raz Education Coordinator Noah Newman joins us now. And uh, Noah, thanks so much for joining us. Now, be before we reveal that winner, we're gonna keep people on edge just for a little longer. Let's first talk a little bit about the community and what it is that you do. Right, yeah, we're just a set of volunteers who uh, put a rain gauge in our backyard or where we work or at school and take a daily precipitation measurement and submit it to our website and it goes right to the National Weather Service and like you mentioned uh, it's open to the public and for anyone to to see the data. That is fantastic and there's always a need for new observers right so last month you held a friendly competition to see who could recruit the most new volunteers so which state came out on top and what did they win Noah? Right. Well, every year we host this event during March, and we have two categories, one for the uh, sheer most number of volunteers recruited, and then we also do a per capita basis for states that don't have this sort of populations. Uh, so the winning state for the sheer number was Minnesota, and uh, they really blew everyone out of the water, uh, but the state for per capita that won was Wyoming. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay. Those are people, those are places where they get a lot of cold weather, a lot of snow mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So they're probably a little bit more weather savvy, I would think, because <laughs> you have to be to survive, right? I, well, in those places, <laughs> for sure. And uh, so for the folks who, who maybe have missed uh, the competition, uh, they can still sign up. It's not like the competition is the end all be all. You can sign up throughout the entire year, right? Absolutely. We recruit year round. We're always looking for new volunteers. The problem is that it can rain across the street and not on you. And so we always mm -hmm. need to have that uh, better understanding of the variability of precipitation from one block to the next. Absolutely. And um, so once people decide they want to do this uh, and they sign up, what kind of training is involved, Noah? The training is very easy. It's all, we've got it online. You can take in-person training, but uh, it's uh, take your pick versus uh, PowerPoint, written materials. We've got uh, some fun animations on our YouTube channel that are uh, really educational and short and, and kind of funny too. So I encourage you to check those out. Now at the end of the training, is there a, a test? Do you have to pass some sort of exam? No, it's, uh, it's kind of learn as you go. Uh, most of the mistakes that actually happen are not measurement errors. They're actually data entry errors. So someone might mm. just have a decimal error or something like that. But we have a rigorous QC uh, effort, and we catch these errors, and we email the volunteers, and they typically will uh, be, be very pleased that someone's looking at their data and <laughs> will probably mm -hmm. never make that mistake again. Now, do you have to be a certain age? Can teenagers do this if they would like? It seems like it could be a good way to maybe win a, uh, to earn a merit badge or something mm -hmm. in weather. It's all ages. We've got third graders doing it, and we've got 100-year-olds doing it. Um, for teenagers, though, it might be a case where they have a requirement for uh, community service sort of credits in high school, and uh, completing a, a one month of complete data with Kokoraz is worth two hours of service credits in many areas. Yes. Very cool. Now, now, Noah, what would you estimate would be the number of uh, observers that you have across the country? We have about 25,000 active volunteers, and uh, on any given day, we get about 15,000 reports. Wow. Wow. So you're pretty well covered. So if someone wants to volunteer and they think, well, I've got a lot of obligations or some trips planned, that kind of thing, do they have to be there every single day to take that measurement? 
Now, the one and only requirement for our, our network is that you have to use the same rain gauge that everyone in the network is using. It's a manual gauge. But other than that, you can report only when you want, when it, only when it rains. Um, but if you want to have a, a really solid record, you report your zeros also, and then you've got a complete record and, and your data are valuable for even more scientists, such as climatologists who are looking at long-term uh, data. Well, Noah Newman, uh, Education Coordinator for the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network, uh, also known as Kokoraz. Thanks so much for joining us. Really a great opportunity for folks who are really into the weather or just want to be a part of the organization. Uh, it's open for everyone. What a great community.